Over the past few months, I have seen African Americans disrespect not only the flag of the United States of America, but the Confederate battle flag as well. I need to show them their history so they understand what their own heritage shows from the past. Instead of following black power, they should be thinking of how to empower blacks. Instead of thinking and or believing black lives matter, what I have to show and say in the following video will hopefully show them that American lives matter without regard to the color of skin coming into play. So are you ready for a bit of African American history? <clears throat> Let us start out with the American Revolution. The very first casualty of this war against the British was a black man. He was the first person to give his life in the name of freedom for our future country. His name is Crispus Attucks. He was shot and killed in what became known as the Boston Massacre in 1770. To the African Americans who are listening to my voice and watching this video, how does that make you feel that the first person to give their life for the flag that I see so many African Americans wiping their asses with or burning was one of your own? What do you think Mr. Attucks would say about the actions of his people now? I believe that he would be extremely disappointed in seeing what African Americans are doing about burning the flag of the country he died for while fighting for his country's freedoms. In the War of 1812, even though African Americans were largely barred from serving in the military, they did so anyhow due to the pride they had for their country. How many of you who currently are listening to this, who are African American, have the pride in their country? to serve because they want to because they have pride for their country if you don't have pride for the country then there's something wrong with you not with the country the 54th regiment Massachusetts voluntary Infantry was an infantry regiment that saw extensive service in the Union Army during the, Civ during the American Civil War. The regiment was one of the first official African American units in the United States during the Civil War. The first South Carolina Volunteers, recruited from freed slaves, was the first Union Army regiment organized with African American soldiers in the Civil War. The 54th Regiment Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry was one of the most famous units of all in the American Civil War. The Army of Northern Virginia battle flag was square of various sizes for different branches of service. 52 inches square for the infantry, 30 inches square for the artillery, and 32 inches square for the cavalry. It was used in battle beginning in December 1861 until the fall of the Confederacy. At the very first battle of Manassas near Manassas, Virginia, the similarity between the stars and bars and the stars and stripes caused confusion and military problems. Regiments carried flags to help commanders observe and assess battles in the warfare of the era. At a distance, the two national flags were hard to tell apart. In addition, Confederate regiments carried many other flags, which added to the possibility of confusion. After the battle, General P.G.T. Beauregard wrote that he was, quote, Resolve then to have the Confederate flag changed, if possible, or to adapt for my command a battle flag 
which would be entirely different from any state or federal flag." Unquote. Approximately 10% of the Confederate States' 250,000 free blacks enlisted as soldiers during the Civil War. Many of them carried the Confederate battle flag into battle with them. The Confederate battle flag was used to tell the difference between Union and Confederate soldiers. In today's world, the Confederate battle flag is considered a symbol of hate and racism. I wonder how those African Americans who carried the Confederate battle flag into battle, many of whom died, would feel about their people of today's world saying that it is a symbol of hate and racism. In the western frontier, African American soldiers, known by the Native Americans as Buffalo Soldiers, upheld the laws of the United States. The 10th Cavalry Regiment, made up of all African Americans, assaulted San Juan Hill during the Spanish-American War. The Battle of San Juan Hill on 1 July 1898, also known as the Battle for the San Juan Heights, was a decisive battle of the Spanish-American War. This fight for the Heights was the bloodiest and most famous battle of the war. It was also the location of the greatest victory of the Buffalo Soldiers of the 10th Cavalry. During World War I, the 369th Infantry Regiment, known as the Harlem Hellfighters, were made up of entirely all African Americans. They were on the front lines longer than any other American unit. The name Hellfighters was given to them by the Germans due to their toughness and that they never lost a man through capture, lost a trench or foot of ground to the enemy. During the bombing of Pearl Harbor, Dory Miller was a Messman 3rd class in the United States Navy. He was assigned to the USS West Virginia, a Colorado class battleship. He was noted for his bravery during the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. He was the first African American to be awarded the Navy Cross, the third highest honor awarded by the U.S. Navy at that time. Nearly two years after Pearl Harbor, he was killed in action when the ship he was assigned to, the USS Liskin Bay, was sunk by a Japanese submarine during the Battle of Macon. During World War II, the barriers and segregation of African Americans were slowly coming down. African American women were allowed to list in the military. Benjamin Oliver Davis, Sr. was the first African American general officer in the United States Army. He was promoted to Brigadier General on 25 October 1940. His son, Benjamin Oliver Davis, Jr. would later become a U.S. Air Force General and Commander of World War II's Tuskegee Airmen. The Tuskegee Airmen were the first African American military aviators in the United States Armed Forces. The Tuskegee Airmen were subject to racial discrimination both within and outside the Army. All black military pilots who trained in the United States trained at Moton Field, the Tuskegee Army Airfield, and were educated at Tuskegee University located near Tuskegee, Alabama. Let me give you a little history concerning the Tuskegee Airmen and the aircrafts they flew. Although the 477th Bombardment Group trained with North American B-25 Mitchell bombers, they never served in combat. The 99th Pursuit Squadron, which later became the 99th Fighter Squadron, was the first all-black flying squadron and the first to deploy overseas. They deployed to North Africa in April 1943 and later to Sicily and Italy. The 332nd Fighter Group, which originally included the 100th, 301st, 302nd Fighter Squadrons, was the first black flying group. 
The group deployed to Italy in early 1944. In June 1944, the 332nd Fighter Group began flying heavy bomber escort missions, and in July 1944, the 99th Fighter Squadron was assigned to the 332nd Fighter Group, which had four fighter squadrons. When the pilots of the 332nd Fighter Group painted the tails of their P-47s and later P-51s red, the nickname Red Tails was coined. So when you see a movie called Red Tails, it is referring to the all-black flying fighter squadron of World War II. The outstanding accomplishments of the Tuskegee Airmen brought an end to segregation in the U.S. military. Let me tell you about some of these accomplishments. The airmen completed 15,000 sorties in approximately 1,500 missions, destroying more than 260 enemy aircraft, sinking one enemy destroyer, and demolishing numerous enemy installations. To honor their accomplishments, the Tuskegee Airmen were awarded numerous high honors, including Distinguished Flying Crosses, Legions of Merit, Silver Stars, Purple Hearts, the Croix de Groix, and the Red Star of Yugoslavia. A distinguished unit citation was awarded to the 332nd Fighter Group for outstanding performance and extraordinary heroism in 1945 after they flew a long escort mission to Berlin and back with no reinforcements. The Tuskegee Airmen of the 477th Bombardment Group never saw action in World War II. However, they staged a peaceful, non-violent, yet very pointed protest for equal rights at Freeman Field, Indiana, in April of 1945. Their achievements proved conclusively that the Tuskegee Airmen were highly disciplined and capable fighters. They earned the respect of their fellow pilots, bomber crews, and military leaders, who were white Americans. Tuskegee Airman Herbert Carter put it this way, You grow up feeling a, a love for your country in spite of its imperfections. You're happy and proud to be an American who just happens to have a different pigmentation, a different color skin. In reality, the Tuskegee Airmen fought and won two battles, one against racism and one against fascism. Having fought America's enemies abroad, the Tuskegee Airmen returned to America to join the struggle to win equality at home, and they won it. During the Vietnam War, Caucasian Americans and African Americans in the U.S. Army made the strongest fighting force to be reckoned with. Since then, African Americans have accomplished many triumphs. Here are some of the triumphs. Samuel L. Gravely Jr. was the U.S. Navy's first African American Admiral. He was commissioned in 1971. Frank E. Peterson was the United States Marine Corps' first African American General. He was commissioned in 1979. He was also the first African American Marine Corps aviator. Hazel W. Johnson Brown was the U.S. Army's first African American female general. She too was commissioned in 1979. Colin L. Powell was the first African-American chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States of America. He was given the post in 1989. In Operation Desert Storm, he led the U.S. Armed Forces in the most impressive victories in military history. Vernice Armour, born in 1973, is a former U.S. Marine Corps officer who was the first African-American female naval aviator in the U.S. Marine Corps and the first African-American female combat pilot in the U.S. Armed Forces. She flew the AH-1W Super Cobra attack helicopter 
in the 2003 invasion of Iraq and eventually served two tours in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Arlene Barnum is a Vietnam-era veteran of the U.S. Army and is a Republican activist who supports the Confederate battle flag. She attended a recent rally which had both whites and blacks attending as supporters. After the rally, however, Barnum was injured in an accident when the truck she was in rolled over after reported being chased by those who opposed the support of the Confederate battle flag by blacks. The truck was being driven by Anthony Harvey, another speaker and supporter at the rally. Anthony Harvey of Oxford, Mississippi, was well known in the north of the state for his support of the Confederate flag and in fact wrote a book in 2006 titled Why I Wave the Confederate Flag written by a black man. However, 49-year-old Harvey was killed in that car crash. Have you heard anything about that in the news? Of course not. It doesn't fit the narrative. Was it a hate crime? We may never know. But you can bet your ass if Mr. Harvey had been against the flag and it was a car full of white guys who ran him off the road, we'd already have the Department of Justice investigating it and it would be all over the network news. Instead, the grieving family of Anthony Harvey is left with a GoFundMe account to support his widow. With all the African Americans who have given their life for the country in the past wars, how does the current generation of African Americans honor their lives, memories, and sacrifices? They do so by wiping their asses and burning the American flag, the very flag their brothers and sisters of past wars died for. What do you think they would say if they could talk to those who, who are disrespecting the flag today? Would they be proud of you all and stand by you, or turn their backs on you in disgrace and embarrassment? As I said in the beginning, instead of saying that just black lives matter, it should be American lives matter. Instead of black power, it should be black empowerment. The race tensions in the United States are at the highest it has ever been in the history of the USA. Why is that? The person who sits in the Oval Office of the White House has said it time and again. He doesn't care. How can we, as Americans, have someone who is elected by the people and for the people not be about the people? Recently, five U.S. military members were killed in Tennessee due to a terrorist attack. They were all white Americans, four Marines and a U.S. Navy sailor were gunned down at their place of work while defending our country on American soil and being defenseless by being unarmed. If these U.S. military men had been African Americans, you can bet your asses that Obama would have done whatever he could to place them on a pedestal. Why should the lives of American soldiers be treated differently based on the color of their skin? What would the African Americans who have died in the past fighting for the U.S. and your rights and freedoms say about the way Obama is giving racial favoritism say? What would they say? They would most likely say that he does not deserve to be president because he is not a neutral party when it comes to race. It is my belief that the African Americans who died in the past for freedom would be embarrassed and ashamed for the acts of Obama today. It does not matter about race, color, or the ethnic group you come from. You are still American. Peoples from all walks of life have come before you and fought for the stars and stripes as well as the stars and bars, many of whom died defending both flags. You do not honor their memories and accomplishments by wiping your ass with the flag they died for. You do not honor their memories and accomplishments by burning the very flag they fought for. You disgrace them and embarrass them with your actions. Be proud of your heritage. American lives matter. Your fight should be to preserve what those before you have fought and died for, not destroy it. American lives matter. American lives should be fought for.
American lives do matter.